Now let's get into today's message because I believe I have something for you today that's going to be very impactful, that has the opportunity to bring an immense amount of life change, and I, I hope you can get it. And I'll start it off with kind of a kind of a hard question, kind of like a tense question, and I'm and I'm wondering if anyone in here has ever felt disappointed in life. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> I'm like some people are like, yeah, you're not. It's dark in here. I can still see you. You're looking at me different now. I, I see it. I see it. <laughs> If you've ever felt disappointed in life, it can, be, it can just be really hard. Um, maybe you felt like, by this time in my life, I thought things would be different. Am I the only one that does that? You know, at this age, I would have hoped that I would have accomplished this. Or maybe um, I, w- I-, I wish I would have had more. I wish I w- things would have been different. I, think, I wish things would be better. I just am dis- I'm a little disappointed with where I'm at right now. Or how about this one? How about this? How about you got the things that you thought you wanted, but it didn't satisfy you? How about you achieved those goals, and then the next thing you, you got to do is just achieve more goals? Like you got the raise, you got the promotion, you got the family, but now you're like, well, now I'm just striving for the next thing. So you got what you thought you wanted, but it didn't satisfy you. If you've ever felt disappointed, if you've ever felt let down by what you thought this world was supposed to offer or what you thought your goals were going to give you, and if you've ever wondered, I hope, I wish there was something more, let me just tell you, there is. There is something more. And it's not a surprising answer. It's, it's a repeat answer. And that one is Jesus. He is the most important thing. When we become devoted to him, when we get closer to God, tell, listen to me, everything gets better. Everything gets better. Your whole life gets better. The the title of today's message is, Today I Choose That I Will Get Closer to God. And that's my prayer for you. That's my hope for you is that you would get, after the end of this message, that something would change in your life. Something would draw you closer and something would would shift and change. And that's that's what I'm going to try to talk you through today is getting you and, and myself too closer to God, drawing in. We're in this series, of course, to called Today I Choose. Today I Choose. And it's all about how the decisions in our life determines the direction of our life. The direction of our life is determined by the choices that we make. And that's, that's the problem. Our choices are hard. <laughs> Decision making is hard, especially when you're in the moment and it's like a choice between having some fruit or having some ice cream. All right, come on, it's, it's hard. It's hard to make the right choice every time, but that is that is, in essence, what we're talking about. That's, that's what we want to we figure out. How do I make those right choices? How do I choose today the kind of life that I want tomorrow? And we talked about in this series how following Jesus, following Jesus isn't just one big decision. Of course it is. You know, we, we decide, we raise our hand, we lift our hand, and following Jesus isn't just one big decision. It's countless daily choices that we make. Following Jesus happens every single day, many times a day. Am I going to follow Jesus in my decision making or am I going to go my own way? And that's something we all need to evaluate. That's something we all need to to keep in our heart. So the word of the day today is devotion. It's devotion. And I want to turn your attention to um, one of the scriptures that was written in my very first Bible, okay? In my very first Bible, my pastor wrote a scripture on like the front cover. This thing is like falling apart today. Look at that. It's just totally banged up. But in my very first Bible, he wrote this passage. It's Matthew 6, verse 33. He writes this. Um, the, uh, the Jesus says this. It's recorded this way. But seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I'm going to read it one more time because it's just, it's so powerful. Especially early on in my Christianity, it was so powerful for me. And I hope... I hope it hits you the same way. It hope, I hope it gives you something the way it gave something to me. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. See, Jesus was, was walking around in a field and he was telling his disciples, um, look at the birds. You know, look at the birds. They, they, are, they, they don't lack for anything. They can just go and get a worm and they're always fed. They're always good to go. Look at the flowers. Look how beautiful they are. They don't have to, they don't have to worry about what they're going to wear, how much clothes they're going to have, how much, how much uh, food, like the birds. And it's like, look, look around. Look how God has wonderfully provided for the birds and the flowers. Doesn't he care about you even more than that? And he does. It's a rhetorical question. The answer is, yes, he does. He absolutely does. And then he, he, he finishes off with this just profound idea. Seek first 
God's kingdom and everything else is going to work itself out. It's going to be taken care of. You may not be the richest person on your street, but your needs will be met and you will be satisfied. That's beautiful to me. That's wonderful to me because that means I don't need to strive. I don't need to press in for my own sake, for my own benefit, for my own glory. I can just seek God first and everything gets taken care of. It's beautiful. I love it. And so today, the statement of the day that I'm going to come back to a few more times, but I'm going to introduce it to you is today I will seek first the one who matters most. I hope you would write that down. I hope that you would kind of solidify that in your thinking today as we continue this talk, that I'm gonna seek first the one who matters most or seek first what matters most, which is God and his kingdom. Okay, well, what does it mean to be devoted to Jesus? That's a good question. Like, what, what does that mean? What does it mean to seek first? What does it mean to be devoted? If devotion is the word of the day, and um, I only hear people say devo, like that's my devo time. I'm devo, devo, that's, that's slang for devotional time. <laughs> I, I realized recently I was talking to somebody who's kind of newer and they're, I'm like, oh yeah, in my devos, I do this. And they're like, what? Looking at me like, you know, I was speaking Greek to them and it's just devotional time. Well, what does it mean to really be devoted to Jesus? What does it mean to be like totally dug? And what does it mean like when Jesus was raised from the dead and we're talking first century Christians, first century believers, what did it mean for them to be devoted to Jesus? I think sometimes we can go back in time and go back to like the purest form of the Christian church and, and look, at, look at these folks right here and see this is what it meant. And so I wanna turn your attention there to Acts chapter two, verse 42, very popular passage of scripture, talks about the church, talks about the community of what we are supposed to be all about here. And it goes like this, Acts two forty two, They devoted themselves, there's that word, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and I would argue that meant church. That meant kind of what we're doing here. Now, I'm not egotistical enough to call myself an apostle or anything like that, but I am the best you got. <laughs> I'm, I'm a pastor. Absolutely. I am a pastor and a teacher. And so they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And, and as, it, as it continues on, I mean, there was Timothy, there was other pastors, and they devoted themselves. I would argue this is talking about the corporate experience. This is, this is talking about the once a week, man, we come all together and we're listening to our pastors teaching. They devoted themselves to that. They were devoted to it. They were committed to it. They didn't like open up, you know, Google Calendar and be like, well, I don't know like what's going on that day. I don't know if I feel like maybe today I feel like I'm rested enough or I don't know. Like that's not, that wasn't an open spot for them. You know, like the little blocks in your calendar. That was not an open block. It was like in there, in red. You know, it was there all the time. They were devoted to the apostles teaching. And then these next two, I think, are kind of the same. To fellowship and to the breaking of bread. Uh, the fellowship, to me, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's talking about us being together, us like being in fellowship throughout the week. To me, it's talking about groups. It's talking about this emphasis that we've been putting on groups for the last month. We've been talking about it constantly. Groups, I'm for a group, 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 group. Why? Because it's right here. Like this is the purest form of what it means to be a church is we're devoted to the apostles teaching and we're devoted to fellowship, breaking bread, just eating together, being together throughout the week. Like, hey, let's go to your hut. No, let's go to your hut. Let's go to your hut. All right, let's just hang out together. I don't know if they lived in the huts. I wasn't there, okay? Watch The Chosen. They'll tell you what's up. It's a good show though. It really is. I'm looking forward to it. And they didn't pay me to say that either. I'm just, I'm excited. I just like it. I just like it. And so they, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking the bread, and then to prayer, to prayer. Um, to me, this is talking about, to, they, they prayed together. I don't know how many people talk about this very much. It doesn't get talked about nearly enough, but the church was birthed in a prayer meeting. They weren't on their own just in their quiet time. They were together, 120 of them, having a prayer meeting like we have every single week here. The church was born, the Holy Spirit hit them in a prayer meeting. So I think it is corporate on one side, but I don't think it's only corporate. I think the more, when I read the whole counsel of scripture, when I read the whole Bible, I think it's important to do both. So it's important to come to church and have that, you know, togetherness and, and listen to the teaching to be devoted to that, but it's also important to have your devotional time on your own and read your, read your word on your own and, and listen to the Lord on your own, right? So it's, it's corporate and it's, it's private. 
and there's fellowship and that's, that's corporate. And then there's prayer, which is corporate and also private. Like we, I would never ever say, just come to the corporate prayer meeting that we do yeah, and you're good. You don't need to pray any other time than that. I mean, that's, that would be heresy for one. And for two, it wouldn't be very helpful to you either because we are designed to be in constant fellowship with God. And that's what the early church did. That's all, that's, they devoted themselves to those things, all right? So this, this word devoted right here in, in this is, is, a, is a Greek word. It's, it's, tra- it's actually in the, um, the imperfect tense, looked it up. It's in the imperfect tense, which means it's ongoing. It wasn't a one-time devotion. It was an ongoing devotion that they, it, this was continual. This was like, they were continually devoted to all of these things. And it was an ongoing process for them to continually be devoted to the Lord. These disciples, and I would argue we as his disciples, need to have a single-minded, ongoing pursuit of Jesus. And that's what makes our life shine. And that's what it means to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else is added to us when we're devoted to those things. But imagine with me, this is kind of funny. (laughs) Imagine with me if that verse was written for today's Christians. I took the liberty of um, jotting down my own translation, if you will. All right, so this is the, um, the new, revised, modern Eliot translation of this passage right here. All right, I want you to hear it. Um, they devoted themselves to themselves. Amen. Somebody said amen to that. They, they continually and passionately pursued self-centered life of comfort and ease. All right, now nobody's posting that on their Instagram. But I think many of us, if we evaluate our lives, we, we, we can get a little wrapped up in, in our stuff, in ourselves, in, in everything going on for me. Like, I'm not going to seek first the kingdom. I'll seek first everything else, and then I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to fit him in. I mean, because here's the thing. In this, in this translation, in my fake, it's not a real translation, everybody. I can't believe I need to say that, but it's not real, everybody. I don't have my own translation, which is probably fine. It's probably good. But... These believers, these followers, they, they just wanted to be liked. And don't we sometimes? We just want to be liked. We just want to be comfy. We just want to be popular. We want to be TikTok famous or whatever. We want to, be, uh, we want to, we want to finish school. We want to marry a hottie. We want to like, just like have two cars in the driveway. We want to, and then dot, 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 we want to go to heaven when we die. Of course, of course, like obviously. And sometimes we just rationalize, you know, everybody's just going to go to heaven no matter what. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. <laughs> it's just not, it's just not true. Like we, we've got to, we've got to be able to, to believe in something. And I know m- m- all of you would say, no, that's not me. That's not me. I don't live that way. I'm not, I'm not that selfish. And I'm, I'm not the kind of hardcore kind of person to tell you, yes, you are. You need to, Ugh. that's not my style. It's not my voice. And I, I, cause I hope it's not. And I believe it's not. I, I know that's not what you really want, but I think sometimes more often that we can just slip into because it's more of a natural state for us. We have this thing called the flesh and the flesh is, the flesh is our natural desires, the things we're born with, you know, the, the, the desires and, and wants that don't match up with the spirit all the time. Um, we, we naturally drift into that. We have to stay focused and, 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 stay, and stay dialed in. Um, and I just wanna hopefully today just wake us up to uh, what we are really devoted to. So I put this up. I, I saw this illustration. A pastor did this, and so I want to share it with you. Um, this illustration of a line, um, there's actually, um, you probably can't see it from where you're at, but there's actually like almost 168 dots right there. It looks like just a flat line, but it's actually a bunch of dots. And so each dot is 100, it's, it's every hour of your week. There's 168 hours in your week. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about where that, where that really goes. I want you to think about how much of your life is devoted to these different activities. So one third of your life, God designed you to sleep for that eight hours. And if you're not getting that, get it. I met with somebody recently that only sleeps four hours a week. I'm like, bro, you ain't human. All right, don't talk to me. That's not fair because you get all this extra time in life. One third is sleep. One third is either work or school. Nothing wrong with that. And that leaves us with 56 hours of just kind of play, free time. Okay, and I I read this recently too. Um, You can Google this yourself and, and see for yourself. It's kind of embarrassing for our society, but the average 
American spends 16 hours a week on social media. 16 hours a week. That's over two hours a day. You know what average means is some people, some people are less, some people are even more. All right. So that's, that's average. So there it is. And they know, I mean, they have the data. They, they know. They're not asking you, so how much time? Oh, I think just a few minutes. No, they know. They know how much time we're spending on social media. So it's about that much. And then there's this leftover that leaves us about 40. And then not to mention the fact that we have to commute to work. We have to do all of our chores. We have to go to the gym. We have to drive our kids back and forth to every single place, every single sporting event and school and all this stuff. We got to help our kids with their homework when they get home. Great thing to do. But we got to watch Hulu too before the, before the nighttime comes. So, and then so all the way at the end of that, we have this one hour left for God every week. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I mean, we got one hour and let's be honest, sometimes it's hard to do that. Sometimes it's hard to get to that. It is. And so I'm just gonna state the obvious here that when you invest one hour a week into anything is not gonna go the best for you if you wanna be devoted to that thing. Let's talk about exercise. If you, act, if you go to the gym and exercise for an hour on Monday and then you're like, I'm good. See you next Monday. You're probably not going to be in peak health, you know. <laughs> you probably need to probably do a little more than that, right? How about if you spent one hour devoted to your spouse every week? That, I mean, you're probably not going to get marriage of the year, okay? You're going to need to do more than that. I mean, one hour a week is not enough to do hardly anything. If you study only one hour a week, I'm just, I did not do good in school. One hour would have been a massive improvement for me personally, but I'm just saying maybe some of you did better than that, but you're not gonna be at the top of your class. You'd be lucky to graduate. You only study one hour a week. Unless you're good at sports, then you're good to go. All right, you're gonna do fine. <laughs> if we're only partially devoted to God and we only spend a little bit of time with him, of course, that's gonna be easy. It's gonna be convenient but your spiritual life is not going to improve. It's not gonna get any better than that. People say, well, I'm just not being fed, you know, or, or you know, I'm just, I can't understand why, you know, I keep falling back into the same old problem, into the same old sin. I can't understand why my relationships aren't working out the way I wish they would. I, I don't, I, it's no wonder we rarely share our faith. It's no wonder that uh, we care so much about what people think about us and we care so much about our image rather than carrying the image of God. Heard that recently, beautiful, beautiful imagery there of if we, only, if we only give God like this little bit of our leftovers, then we're just not gonna grow there. And again, I know this might sound like harsh. I'm like, I'm being harsh with you. I don't mean to be. I'm just, I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to realize, man, I... I I wonder how much time we really are devoting to God because these, these disciples devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, breaking bread, prayer. They, they were devoted to it. And I would just say, uh, you, no one ever lived for Jesus on accident. I don't think something like that happens on accident. I don't think we become like the, the person God wants us to be just by like, oh, you know, I'll just... Uh, just to fall into it. No, this is something that's intentional. It needs to be intentional for us. So today I would just ask you to choose to live with, with purpose and with an ongoing single-minded pursuit of Jesus that I don't want to put him in the cracks of my life. I don't want to supplement my life with God. I want to be devoted to him. How? That's the real question. How do we do that? Let's turn back to scripture here. And in John chapter 15, famous verse, uh, beautiful verse. I think Jesus was right around a vineyard when he was, which works for us here in Lodi. All right, this works for us. But in John 15, he was probably near a vineyard and he said something like this. He said exactly this. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. I borrowed my son's stick to prove this illustration, all right? Jesus is, is the vine. He's what we're connected to. We are this branch, all right? My son's seven and when I came in from the house and I was like, hey, I found this cool stick. This is really gonna work for my illustration. He's like, that's my stick. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see your name on it. <laughs> got a little hyphy with him. It's all right. It's okay. But let's say this together. Jesus is the vine. I am the branch. I am a branch. 
Oh, you're so good. You're so accommodating. I love that. When you, the branch, are connected to Jesus, the vine, you are going to bear much fruit. That's what all of our sustenance comes from. It's what all of our nutrients comes from. It's, from. it's the life that we draw from in being connected to him. And let me remind you of what that fruit of the spirit is. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, everything that I've listed there for you. I think, it's, I, think I got it for you. It's around here somewhere. It's all right. I forgot that slide. No, no big deal. Y'all know what that, I mean, you, does anybody want peace? Is anybody looking for peace? I actually, um, just recently I, I posted something like, hey, I'll just pray for everyone's peace. And it's, it's amazing how many people are really desperate. Oh, thank you. I'm, I've just been needing peace so much. I'm like, I don't even know you. This is crazy. People are looking for it. They need it. But how many of us know th- where peace comes from? is being connected to Jesus, is remaining in him. All of these things that we're looking for so much just come from being connected to him. Why do we get off track? We get off track so easily, like, oh, I'm gonna find it over here. It's like we try to plug in to all these things that don't provide the fruit that we're going for. Peace comes from him. Joy comes from him. Love comes from him. Self-control man, I just can't seem to get, you know, myself to blah, blah. connected to him. We get it from him. That's, that's fruit we get from being connected to Jesus. And that's a, it's a powerful truth. So how do we remain? How do we remain? I'm going to, I'm going to back up one verse. I'm going to hang on to this branch though, because it's kind of, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm going to back up one verse. And there's, there's um, one word that's a, repeated 11 times in this chapter. We'll see if you can guess what word it is. John 15 verse four says this, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Can anyone guess what word is repeated? So, so uh, it's remain, remain. We've got to not just get connected, but we have to remain. In other words, devoted remain in him. We have to remain in him. So I, I look this one up. This is a Greek word, minno. Minno. It means to abide, live in, to dwell. It does not mean a one hour weekly check duty to God. That is not what it means. We have to remain in him fully devoted, all in devotion to the one who matters most. The branch needs the vine to survive to survive. Well, you're like, well, I mean, what do you mean survive? I mean, spiritually. I mean, the things that you really want. Going back to that question we started off the message with, feeling unsatisfied, feeling disappointed in life, feeling like there's something missing. What could it be? It's remaining in him. This is a message about devotion and being devoted to God. The branch needs the vine. We've got to say, if we, if we get disconnected from him, we die. Spiritually, of course, just like Adam and Eve, we die. We, we lose our life source. We lose our energy. We lose our compassion. We lose all those fruits of the spirit, all of it. We won't get the nutrients we need. We won't bear any fruit. We'll break much easier. I need this for next service, so I can't break it right now. But, and Evan would be mad at me for sure. <laughs> but Jesus is that vine. You are the branch. Be a branch, stay connected. Today I choose that I will be devoted to the one who matters most. Today, I'm gonna seek first the one who matters most. So I want to get practical today because I love, I love preaching, I love listening to preaching, but for me personally, one of the most important things I can do as you know, your pastor, as the person that you're, you're listening to, I wanna give you something practical. I wanna give you something you can take away today and begin to change, see life change in your life, something that you can grab onto and say, all right, I'll do it. So I wanna create a game plan. I wanna at least give you the outline for a game plan so you can begin to plug some things in. Is that all right? Is that all right if I give you some kind of an outline here? I want you to create a game plan for devotion. And number one thing that you do is I want you to choose a time. When it comes to devotion, devotional time, I want you to pick a time where I am going to dig into the things of God. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm gonna be listening to him. It doesn't have to be all day. But, it has, but I would encourage you to pick a time. For me, it's always early because for me personally, the longer my day goes, 
um, the more random my day gets. <laughs> the more people call, the more people text, the more I need to go pick up so-and-so. Or I need to, so I like to do it early because that's the time of the day where I have the most control over my own schedule. And so earlier is better for me, but maybe for you it, it is in the evening or maybe it's a little of both. I'm gonna do a little here, a little there, but I, I'm encouraging you now, choose a time. Today I choose to be devoted. So today I'm gonna choose a time. And that's something you could do right now. It's something you could do today. You could write it in the margins. Be like, you know what? 6 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever it is. Choose a time. It could be before the kids wake up. For some of you, it has to be before the kids wake up. It could be with your morning coffee. It could be before or after the gym. Doesn't, doesn't, like I said, doesn't really matter. For me, it's early. I want you to choose a time. And then the second thing I want you to do, I want you to choose a place. We brought some of these ideas up to you before uh, because they're, they're kind of universal. It's something that Tiffany and I have always believed in. And so we've taught you this before, but hopefully this reminder is helpful to you in the context of this message of being devoted. I want you to choose that time, but I also want you to choose a place, some place that works for you, where distraction-free, you're comfortable, it's, it's agreeable to you. Uh, for Tiffany, it's the chase part of the, the couch. There's like this chase. And every, every morning when I, when I wake up and I, when I come out of the garage, my place is my garage, but it's not as, not as glamorous to talk about a garage. But I come out of the garage and I look and she's always there, always there in, in her spot with her blanket and her kitty cat and her Bible open. It's, it's beautiful to see. And I know my kids wake up every week and they see that too. They're being taught. They're being not rammed down their throat, but they're seeing mom and dad do it. Well, I wake up too early for them to see it because they just don't wake up very early, but at least they see mom do it. Pick a place, pick a place that works for you. It could be um, in your favorite chair. It could be in your back porch. It could be in the bathroom, wherever you can hide from the kids. All right. I'm just telling you, I understand. I know you're hiding out in there in my devotional times. <laughs> Close and lock this door really fast. And this last one, this is like an idea I had, but I don't really, I don't really love it is um, like on your commute. Uh, because what I, the reason I don't like choosing the place to be on your commute, because I don't, wanna, I don't wanna devote myself to God when I'm really just supplementing my time with God. I don't wanna fit God in the cracks of my life because I, I'm unwilling to like create his own time, which I understand. I know some of you are like, man, I'm just, I don't have any other time. It's so hard. I'm so busy. Or maybe you're just new to all of this. And so this would be fine. Like you just listen to the Bible on your, on your, uh, on your radio, on the, on the way to work. I, I love supplementing my devotional time at the gym in the earbuds and I'm listening to scriptures or whatever, or on my drives. But I like to have a special time and place where I'm doing that because I know I'm, I'm actually giving that to God, not just fitting him in the cracks because I don't want to, I don't want to rest on that. I love supplementing that, but I don't want to just rest in that. So, but if that's all you got, Hey, come on, power to you. If that's a step up for you, then go ahead, start there. That's going to be just fine. This last one is, is choose a plan, choose a plan. Um, there's a reason why I talk about, and we talk about the YouVersion Bible app every single week every single week, because there is, there is really nothing better to stay on a Bible reading, but there's thousands of plans in that app. And I would love for every single person to, to have access to that. Even for kids, you know, they're able to have a plan, something they could follow along with, have a Bible reading plan. It could be as simple as one chapter a day, a couple verses a day, or you could really like bite off a little bit more. I like to add, I like do my normal reading. I read through the whole Bible in a year and then I do the New Testament twice and then I'm adding Proverbs on that. But you know, I'm faster. I better be, I better be eating as much as I can of that word. But like wherever you're at, just be on a plan so you know what you, so you have a plan, something you can move forward in. And then here's this next one, a little bit less known is for prayer. It's called the Pray First app. Everyone say pray first. Pray first. Pray first. Oh my gosh. Oh, little known gem because praying consistently is hard. Anybody who's tried it knows it's hard. But this little app uh, created by a church that we are in great relationship with, if you would download the, the Pray First app, I've been using it since August, changed my prayer life. Absolutely, 100% changed my, I've been praying a long time, but it changed my prayer life, absolutely. And, Cause it's got all these, these outlines like praying through the Lord's prayer. You know, you can pray like through those statements of the Lord's prayer and it gives you a guide so that you can actually have something to pray for 20 minutes. 
or 10 minutes or wherever you're at. I've been using the tabernacle prayer guy. You, you download the app, you go look at that. I love it. I love it. I've prayed it every single day for like the last four months, five months, however long it's been. I've absolutely loved it. You're welcome. If you've been, if you've been wanting to kind of grow in your prayer life, you are welcome. Go and download that Pray First app and do that. So the version Bible app, the, the Pray First app, and then there's also the first 15 on Spotify uh, with Lifeline Church. Lifeline Church has its own Spotify. You can listen to some worship uh, while that's going on. So have a plan. Have a plan. So have a, have a time, a place, and a plan. And let me just tell you, things are gonna begin to change in your life. Remember that you have 168 hours in your week. Don't give God your leftover. Throughout the day, talk to God, listen to God, let him speak to you. When you seek him first, something happens. It changes your heart. It changes your desires. You begin to hear from him differently. He begins to direct your steps. He begins to speak to you in a new and fresh way. He'll give you words to share with your family, your friends, your loved ones, even strangers. He's going to begin to speak through you. His Holy Spirit will be on the inside of you on a new level. I'm telling you, this changes everything. When we begin to be devoted to him, he's not just a part of your life. God is your life. He is your life. I'm not just filling up the cracks with him. No, he is my life. I'm starting my day with him and I'm devoted to him throughout the day, throughout the week, all throughout. He is my life. He's not a part of my life. That's, that's not where... Ah, that's not where life is. There's so much more. There's so much better. Again, going back to the beginning of this message, if, you've, if you're wanting something more, if you're looking for something more, I'm telling you, it's found in Jesus and it's found through not just finding Jesus, but staying devoted and remaining in Jesus. Be the branch connected to the vine. Let him speak to you throughout the day. It impacts every area of your life. It'll impact your job. It'll impact your career. It'll impact your marriage. It'll impact every relationship you have. Being devoted to him because when you seek him first, everything else falls into place. It's amazing. It's amazing. You don't have to stress yourself out anymore. You don't have to worry about, oh, how do I take care of this? How do I take care of that? No, because we seek him first and it changes everything. It changes everything. God is God is your life when that happens. Talking to God, listening to God, aligning our hearts to what lasts because you never know what a day will bring. I wanna finish this message off um, by just telling you kind of a, a personal story um, about uh, someone I started off in ministry with, Tiffany and I both, when we first started off um, pastoring about 12 years ago, um, there was, a, there was a guy named Pastor Larry. He was an associate pastor here. Um, the old school, the old guard all know Pastor Larry. It's been a while since I told the story about Pastor Larry, but he was really, really, really special to me personally. He was like a mentor and a friend. He was good at everything, right? He played guitar. He did the preaching. Um, he, he did it every, he did all the painting. Yes, thank you. Some of us still remember. That was a long, long, long time ago. The church has grown a lot since then, but... Um, so in our first year, um, Pastor Larry turned up with cancer and it was like super aggressive, super fast. And it happened, it happened so quickly that we really didn't have any time to even think about it. And we're all believing for the miracle, but everything changed like overnight. He, it felt overnight to me. He, he turned frail, he got weak, his skin changed color, his breathing, you know, everything was labored. It was just so, so crazy. And on the last day of his life, or one of the last days of his life, we all went down, many of us went down to the hospital in that hospital room and we were playing guitar and we were worshiping and we were believing for the miracle. But for him, the miracle was heaven because he passed away. And the very first funeral I ever did was for a mentor and a friend. I had never even done a funeral before. We were brand new. I, I, in that moment, I felt like I just got saved and was like, where do I go? What do I do? I lost this friend and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And something happened to me when I, when I went through that, I, I realized that no matter how, how much, you know, we think we have time, you have no idea when, when your time is up. I, there was an urgency in me. I, I saw the brevity of life and I, I didn't want to waste any time anymore. I, I realized in every single funeral I've done since then, I talk about it is that you never know what day could be your last. And so it's important to live your life the best you can because since then, I've, because of my background, because of my addiction and, and the, the drug addiction, the alcoholism and, and the circles I ran with, I've, 
I've had to bury many friends that are my age and even younger than me. And it's heartbreaking. I, I don't know. I just, something woke me up when I went through that with Pastor Larry, though, that it, it changed my life. It, it, yeah, I'm reminded too often that life is short. I hope and pray that you won't need to experience that to get this. I want you to evaluate now your 168 hours. Look at what you believe, what matters most, what lasts. Devote your life to that. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Devote your life to him and everything else will begin to line up. Nobody ever devoted themselves to Jesus by accident. Choose today. I'm gonna go all in with this. I'm gonna be devoted like the early apostles. Like I'm gonna devote myself to the apostles' teaching. I'm gonna devote myself to breaking bread and, and getting into these groups. I'm gonna devote myself to reading my Bible every single day. I'm gonna devote myself to praying every day. And it's not about perfection. It's just about moving forward in that relationship. Some of us just need to take one step in that direction and that's gonna be improvement for you. God will bless that. He will bless that. I was always taught, always taught, it's not, about, it's not about how close we are to Jesus, it's about what direction we're heading in. That's a big truth. That's a big truth. Because then it's not about comparing, it's not about am I good enough, am I a good enough Christian next to them or next to them or next to them, it's just about which direction am I heading? Am I getting closer to Jesus each day? Or am I, or am I staying stagnant, getting further away? So for you, it's just, it's beginning to add the, the time, the place, the plan, being devoted, being devoted to what we do here, being devoted to the groups, but also being devoted in your own time, corporate and personally. It'll change everything. It'll change your entire life. I like to think serving Jesus like that changes our entire life. Look at what you believe. Look at what matters most. What's gonna last? Devote your life to that. And when you start doing this, let me just tell you, you're gonna face resistance. I already know, I've been through it. When you devote yourself at a new level to something like this, maybe devoting yourself to prayer more, devoting yourself to the word more, devoting yourself to church more, taking a next step in that. It seems like devoting yourself in finances, that's the one I see the most often. Someone wants to get devoted in their finances and then next thing you know, the washer breaks. It happens every time. <laughs> Car breaks down, happens, it happens every time, it's crazy. But as you get closer to Jesus, I'm, I'm just telling you, you will face resistance. There's gonna be hard days. There's gonna be reasons to quit. That's why it's so important for us to decide, to choose. Today, I am devoted to Jesus and I am gonna seek first the one who matters most. Even in the face of opposition, I'm actually gonna grow more in that. Because if something's not important, I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna find an excuse not to do it. But if something is important to me, I'm gonna overcome every obstacle. And I'm gonna con stay consistent in that. Like we talked about last week, I'm gonna stay consistent in that. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna find a way because I'm devoted to Jesus. I wanna be devoted to him. And if that's your prayer today, I'm just inviting you to choose. Seek first the one who matters most. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you've been trying to get answers for your life any other way, I'm just inviting you. Let's turn our eyes to him. Because maybe, just maybe, in fact, I assure you, when we devote our lives to Jesus, everything else will be added to you. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. As we do every week, I wanna give every single person an opportunity um, to just renew their relationship with Jesus or maybe start a new relationship with Jesus. And no matter where you're at, I want you to know that God has been looking forward to this moment much more than I have. He loves you. I mean, we love you here, but God loves you more. He loves you so much. He created you. He knit you together in your mother's womb. And he's been thinking about you passionately since before that. And I just want to invite you today to devote yourself to him. Give your life to him. He loves you, he cares about you. He wants what's best for you. So if you are one of those, you, maybe you used to walk with him, you used to walk with Jesus, used to be devoted, used to be a, a follower, but something happened, you walked away, just kind of got distant from that. I want to tell you today's your day to get back involved with Jesus at, at that level and have that close relationship with him again. 
But for some of you here, it's your very first time making a decision like that. I just want to tell you, it's, it's, it's a welcome to the family kind of moment. There are, there are no barriers. There are no obstacles other than the ones that live in our own heart. But if we would just open ourselves to him, open our hearts to him, and say, all right, Lord, here's, here's my life. You can have me. Maybe quickly, maybe slowly, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, the things will begin to change over time, but you don't have to get cleaned up to get cleaned up. You know what I'm saying? Jesus is ready for you now. He's, he's, been, he's been ready for you. So if you're ready for that relationship with him or you're ready to come back to a relationship with him, I would just invite you to just lift your hand right now and say, that's me. Just wanna know who I'm praying for. Amen, I see you. Anybody else? Amen, I see you. Anybody else wanna make that decision today? Just be devoted. Amen, you are seen. Amen. Okay, that's wonderful. I love it. I love it so much. Church, let's come together um, and pray this prayer out loud together so that no one feels like they're praying this prayer alone. And if it's in your heart, if this is what you believe, then go ahead and pray it out with all confidence and just repeat it right after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Cleanse me. Forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and show me the path that I should take. Amen.